Oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but this recession is a once in a lifetime opportunity for anyone to get rich. But before I tell you how and what I'm doing, you need to understand that this recession is very different. So normally when GDP growth slows and interest rates plus cost of goods go up, companies fire people to save money, which is what happened in every past recession. But this time, companies are actually doing the exact opposite. And what's more strange than a New York City subway ride is how much profit companies are still making in this economy. Out of 100 US corporations analyzed, net profits were up by a medium of 49% in 2022. And in one company's case, as much as 111,000%, which is absolutely bonkers. But the wildest thing is this. The Fed, my main man JP, you know, the most powerful economic institution in the world, actually wants a recession to happen, at least a slight one. The reason is complicated, but it can all be explained by Damon Targaryen. Damon's on a mission to buy a $5,000 magic lamp for his house, like this guy. He doesn't have the money to buy it straight out, so he goes to the bank for a loan. The interest rate, or the cost to borrow the money, is pretty low, so he agrees to the loan and buys Mr. Magic Lamp. You see, because interest rates were lower than Teresa's hairline the past few years, people like Damon and you, spent more than usual, borrowing lots of cheap money and spending it on an $1,800 Balenciaga trash bag, which is why the total household debt in the US has substantially increased since last year across nearly every category. And because everyone was spending money and buying everything, the price of stuff got higher than Wiz Khalifa. And that's why inflation is at the highest it's ever been in the last 40 years. So in comes the Fed who wants to prevent hyperinflation because it's bad, but to do that, they need to raise interest rates to discourage people from borrowing more money to spend. So now when Damon goes to the bank for another loan, he'll see the higher interest rates and think it's too expensive to borrow more money, and so he doesn't do it. The idea is if a lot fewer people buy things, then prices will come back down. But, and this is a big but, what the Fed is doing needs to be very, how should I say this, delicate. Because if they mess up, it will collapse the world economy as we know it. Sort of. Now throw in a pinch of crybaby Putin, a splash of economic warning signs, a smidge of supply chain issues, and a handful of slowing global growth, and all this makes the world's economic future look darker than the Red Wedding. And if you want to stay updated with finance and business news, but it's TLDR, try my free TLDR newsletter, Daily Market Briefs, link down below. But there is good news. A once in a lifetime opportunity to create massive wealth is almost here. And the better news? It doesn't matter if you only have a few hundo or a milli dollars. If you handle the next few years correctly, you will walk away with a new fortune. And here's what I'm doing. My second biggest priority now is to preserve cash and limit my expenses because of a very specific reason. You need to make sure you have enough liquid money to survive off of in case your income goes down or knock on wood, you lose your job. Personally, I have an emergency fund set aside to cover at least six months of living expenses just in case anything happens. And I've been reducing my expenses over the past few months to stockpile more liquid cash because I wanna be fully ready to execute my first biggest priority when the time comes. If you're having trouble saving a good chunk of money, then honestly, make it only fair. I'd even go so far to say stop investing and contributing to your investments accounts until you build up your emergency fund. Because the worst case scenario is if you do need liquid cash really quickly, the last thing you want to do is sell all your investments at an all time low. But don't worry, I'll share my strategy later on on when you should start investing again. Also, this is super important. So take notes in case you do lose your job. First, file for unemployment insurance. And second, if you have any debt, like an auto loan, your credit card, student loan, call your lenders and tell them what happened. A lot of people don't know this, but those bloodsuckers can actually help you out by reducing your monthly payments, doing interest only, or giving you a grace period. Now, my first biggest priority is to increase cash flow. I learned from growing up with very little money is there will always be a limit to how much you can reduce your expenses by because you still need to, well, survive. That's why increasing your cash flow, even if it's just by a tiny bit, will change your life. Cash flowing an extra $50 a week means an extra $2,600 a year. But how? 
Of course, you can always go to your favorite caring and I'm sure non-exploitative boss and demand a raise, but there's always a chance that you'll eventually lose your job during a recession, which would completely sever the cash flow. Now, personally for me, I always like to prepare myself and be one step ahead in case the absolute worst garbage outcome happens, like the ending of Game of Thrones. So in addition to demanding a raise, you need to also do- Hold on, come here. So contrary to what most people think, recessions aren't a bad time to start side hustles or new businesses. I'd even argue to say it's one of the best times to start because labor and stuff are generally cheaper. But I do need to emphasize, it does have to be a very, very specific type of business. Over the past few years, we've seen new businesses popping up faster than the acne on my face. And the main reason? I'm allergic to dairy, but also money was very cheap to borrow, so every business borrowed it to grow. But these businesses will eventually need to pay the money back, and if they can't manage their business well or be able to pivot during a recession, then chances are they won't survive the coming months. And that's where you sneakily swoop in, just like this pimple. After analyzing a bunch of really successful startups that were created during recessions like Square, Venmo, Airbnb, and Uber, I noticed that they all have these things in common. They're all service-based businesses with low to no inventory, limited cost, flexible pricing, and are easily scalable. So what business should you start? To give you an example, here's what I've been thinking of doing during the recession. So because I make content, I work directly with brands. And I know when times get really tough, brands make less income, and typically ad budget is one of the first things they cut. And since some of my income is from the ad budget, I will make less money. But after understanding the brand's pain points, I realized there's another way to help them, get them more customers in a leaner way. So I set up a brand consultancy that specializes in acquiring new customers for less. Data shows that businesses that increase their market share in a recession actually recover and grow faster than their competitors after the recession. And ironically, recessions are one of the easiest times to get new customers because when there's a crisis, everyone reevaluates what they spend money on and therefore are more open to switching to something better. Long story short, my brand agency takes all the boxes. Service-based business with no inventory, limited cost, flexible pricing, easily scalable, and ran by a devilishly good-looking Dude, oh, how did that get there? Here's a list of great business ideas to start during a recession, and I'll make a separate video diving into them. But if you want a guided approach on how to cash flow $100,000 in 12 months, join the waitlist, link in the description down below. If you followed everything up to this point, this is where you can really amplify your wealth. I know that many of you are waiting for the perfect time to get into the market, but are still a little nervous. But I'm telling you now, recessions present the best opportunities to buy stocks on sale. Well, first, sign up with Moomoo, a broker job that's giving my viewers 10 stocks for free link below i personally use mumu no complaints whatsoever plus it's 10 free stocks the easiest thing to invest in is a diversified index fund but what if i told you a secret that will rock your socks off come here not every stock crashes during a recession, and there are ways to determine which one could perform well. Think about it, if you suddenly wake up tomorrow, your boss fires you, the US economy goes to shit, people lose their jobs, what are you gonna do? You still need to eat, but you probably won't buy organic, free range, vegan friendly pepperoni pineapple pizza from Whole Foods anymore. Instead, you'll probably get it from Walmart. During the 2008 recession, the number one best performing stock in the S&P 500 was Dollar Tree with a one year return of 60.8%. Compare this to the S&P 500 2008 return of minus 38%. Walmart also did well, 20% yearly return. H&R Block, a tax preparation company, was up 25%. Ross, a cheap clothing company, jumped 17.6%. In the top recurring industry in the top 10 best performing stocks during the 2008 recession was healthcare stocks. All these categories make intuitive sense because during a recession, even when everyone's income goes down, there are still staples that that you can't cut out, like affordable food, clothes, healthcare, etc. And these types of stocks shined in the 08 recession. Now, I'm not saying that these stocks are guaranteed to do well in the next recession, but it is something you want to do more research on. Now, regardless of what you invest in, know this. At the end of every single recession comes a raging bull market when the economy goes back to normal. And that's the wave we're going to catch to build massive wealth. Recessions are a natural part of the economy. Since 1945, the US experienced 11. 11 different recessions, which on average lasted around 10 months each. Look at the S&P 500. You can actually see the line going down in September 08 and 11 months later, around August 09, a sharp turn towards recovery. If you zoom out more, the 08 crash was barely a blip in the grand scheme of things. But before you can truly take advantage of this once in a lifetime opportunity, you need to check out this video to learn the six reasons why you're broke. 
And trust me, you need to fix these before you can truly build your wealth.